Hello friends, welcome back. Hope you're doing well. Today I'm in Luminar Neo and I have five things I need to talk to you about and share today. And the first one is, I'm going to show you how to take fall colors and enhance them. That is, fall colors already exist because it's mid-October. Maybe you've been out shooting some of this fall foliage. You want to really bring those photos to life. I'm going to show you how to do that. Second thing is, I'm going to show you how to create those fall colors if they do not exist in the scene that you're shooting. And third thing is, I'm going to give you a free preset pack that will help you create these colors when they don't exist. Fourth, speaking of colors, I've got a new color transfer reference image pack that I just released. It's for sale on my website. I'm going to talk about that, which will allow you to transfer colors from 50 of my colorful, vibrant images and use those as your reference images to transfer those over to your own photos if you happen to like the color work that I do. And number five, I've got a webinar coming up this Thursday, the 17th of October, and it's all about travel photography. I'll put a link down to that below. Let's go ahead and jump into this. First things first, if you've got a fall foliage uh, photo like this one that's already got some beautiful colors in it, the before and after, you can see all I've done is adjust the light. It was a little bit too bright. The simple way to go about and enhance those colors is to go into the color tool and go into HSL and specifically the H or the hue. All you want to do is play with the hues to move those color tones and shift them a little bit to let's say make them a little bit more orange. Well that's what hue is all about. You can take green and you can go to the right. It makes the green more green of course. But if you go left, if you look at the slider here, to the right it's a lot more green. To the left it's a lot more yellow. So the very left side of green is kind of similar to the very right side of yellow. So what I often do is take green to the left and you can see what's happening there to all those greens. They're becoming more yellow of course. Well, you can do the same thing with yellow. The yellow, I'm going to go this way, make it more orange, right? The orange, if I go this way, I make it more red. Now, that's way over the top, but that's the essential gist of how you do it. In a photo like this, where it's got some greens and yellows and a little bit of orange, I'd want to play those up. I'd want to keep the greens, and in fact, I might enhance them by actually going the other way. That'll create a little bit better color contrast, but then take the yellows and the oranges a little bit to the left, and you end up with these beautiful, vibrant colors. And there it is before and after. And just to show you this tool, before and after, nice separation of colors, nice color contrast, and a beautiful overall fall look. That is how you go about enhancing fall colors. Okay, now I'm going to take this photo. This is the before. And that's the after. It was actually taken in November up in Oregon, but because a lot of this is evergreens, they're evergreen, right? It's not really going to get those nice, beautiful oranges and reds, but I want to create that look. And so I'm going to do the same thing here that I did before with some additional tools. So the first thing I'm going to do is go into color and I'm going to go into hue. And on these three, green and yellow, let me grab green and yellow and orange. I'm going to go to negative 100 on all three of them. It's a nice start before and after. But what I want to do is really create an overall fall, almost a fantasy look. And so I'm going to keep going. I'm going to go into the warmth here in color harmony. And I go to the mid to high 30s, like a 37. Split color warmth, I end up going to like a 40. And you can see what's happening here. These oranges are really coming to life. And then in color balance, I want to go into the midtones. And I'm going to take these reds to about a four. So maybe about like that. And then in the highlights, I'm going to do red to about a three. And if you look at the before and after of this tool, it's really taken me a long way. Now that looks nice and normal, uh, very natural. This is starting to get a little bit uh, on the edge of being natural. And in fairness, and in this video and with this particular photo, I decided to go full on fantasy novel, deep autumn, burning red kind of look. So that's what we're going to go do. So the next thing I add, uh, add is mystical. And I just go to about 25 here. And this is because I like the look. I think it does a nice, nice look to the photo. I'm going to go back and get develop. And one of the things I want to do here is kind of play up what's going on in the sky. And that is it's kind of blown out and that sort of thing. So I'm just going to come in with a radial gradient. And I'm going to move this way across here and make it kind of big and just kind of expand this. And, you know, something about like that, maybe a little bit higher. All I'm going to do is play with the light here. And so I'm going to start with a uh, increase in exposure. I'm going to uh, basically the lights already kind of blown out. So I'm just kind of leaning into that. Highlights are actually going to 100 and the whites are actually going to go up as well. And they're going to go to like the mid 30s, like maybe a 33, 34, something like that. 
And then I go into the color and go into temperature and tint. Temperature is gonna do slightly warmer, like a three or so. And the tint is gonna to go to about 30. And so all I'm doing here is just playing with that light. And if you look at the before and the after, it's very yellow. I warmed it up, I changed the tint, um, and I brightened it quite a bit, essentially. So having done that, I'm gonna grab that mask and I'm gonna copy that mask because what I wanna do now is go into the glow tool and I'm just kind of leaning into this kind of brighter, kind of a little bit blown out kind of look. And I'm going to add this mask there. So mask, paste. And if I click show, there's the mask, right? And all I'm going to do here is stay on soft focus. And I go to about mid-teen. So like, let's call it 15 or 16. But if you look at the before and the after, it's just brightening that whole area and kind of leaning into that, essentially the blown out parts of it. It's a look that I like sometimes. It works for me on a photo like this. Not something that you want to do all the time, but hey, we're having fun here. And uh, if you're not having fun, I think you're missing part of the uh, part of the whole point of uh, photo editing. So I'm back in color. This time I use vibrance of 15 across the entire photo. And once again, I'm going into hue. So I'm kind of essentially double dipping on hue. And I'm going to go negative 34. Yellows are like negative 40 or something like that. And greens are negative 100 very vibrant, very orange, but it was very yellow before. And now it's really getting into that deep fall kind of look, which again, I like, it's fun, but this is a fantasy. Uh, and so I'm not trying to pass this off as, you know, here's the uh, beautiful uh, scene that I ran into. I'm completely making this in the digital darkroom, which again is fun. So if you look at the before and the after, a uh, little accent AI, I'm gonna go back into develop one more time. I need some contrast here. I need about a 25, and I need to pull the shadows down about a negative 35. I wanna create a little bit more mood by making it darker. And then I'm gonna wrap this one up with a vignette. And that's just gonna be kinda of just, I'm gonna say slapping this vignette on there. I like round, and I like feathering. I like a little bit of inner light. I'm gonna choose subject and drop that a little bit lower. And uh, that's it, so vignette is in place. And if you look at the before and after, I mean, it's not really the same photo, but this is how you go about creating a fall look where one did not exist before. So before and after, and if you look at this sliding window, it's a, a complete fantasy. I've said that uh, repeatedly, but I just wanna point out this is not a, uh, a thing that you do on every photo, but it can be fun and you can create these kind of fantasy look, deep autumn, the, the burning end of that season kind of look. I think it's a lot of fun. Now, having done that, I told you that I have some free presets that will help you replicate some of these looks. Now, it's not as this, it's not this strong, so I've got a virtual copy of this photo because you can now do that in Luminar. And I'm gonna go into presets and in my purchase, and you're gonna get autumn moods. And in fact, the cover photo for this free preset pack is called, uh, or is this same photo with the edit I just did. Now, I'm gonna go in and show you there's seven presets there for free at the link down below if you wanna check those out. But as you can see, as I hover, these are gonna give you nice, vibrant looks. This one's actually a little bit more green, but you start getting into the yellows and the oranges and the reds. And there's some slight variances between these, but these are a good starting point for you to build upon or to customize images. Now, they're fairly strong. And so if you're starting out with something that's really green, it didn't look that strong, but let me go show you a photo like this one. But now with this photo started like that, I brightened it a little bit, but these presets are gonna be fairly strong, really giving you those warm, crazy kind of gold and orange tones. And that's because it's a big hue shift. All seven of these presets have fairly significant hue shifts. Again, coming from a green photo, it looks great. Coming from one that's already yellow, it's gonna be over the top, but that's not hard to adjust. You just take your preset, maybe pull it down to 40 or 50, and you're off and running. Now, the other thing I found out about these presets, which is really cool, is it works on a lot of other kind of scenes too. So I've got this scene here, which is just a barn and a tree, and it was shot, you know, I don't know what time of year, but later in the year, but this was in Texas, we don't get a big fall. But if you look at the color tones here that I'm getting from these presets, they're pretty cool. Again, fairly strong, fairly over the top, but like, I love that. And it brings up the nice blues and the oranges. And again, if it's too much, just pull it down a little bit and adjust accordingly. Don't forget, if you choose the preset, you can go into edit and then you can make adjustments to those hues in the color tool as part of the preset if you'd like to. It even works on things like this. This is a beach photo. And this beach photo was just something that I would normally edit my normal way with various color tools like Color Harmony, Golden Hour, of course, develop and all that. But look at these, 
fall presets. This is just a foggy morning on the Oregon beach. And look at those colors. I mean, they're looking beautiful, I think. I'm just absolutely loving those. So that's a free preset pack. It's available to anyone that subscribes to my newsletter. There's a link down below. You'll download it automatically and have fun with it. So now having said that, I've also got a color transfer reference image pack that I just released for sale on my website. And that allows you to take 50 different photos of mine. And let me show you those 50. Here we go. 50 different photos, lots of different color tones, a wide color palette, greens, blues, lots of sunsets and sunrises, rich tones, all that kind of stuff. A lot of these kind of photos, uh, these 50 actually are in the reference pack. It's only $7. It's on my website if you're interested, but you can use those and then drop them into the color reference tool and use them as your reference images. So to go back over here, I will grab that same beach that we were on and I've done nothing. It's a raw file as you can see, but I'll go to color transfer and I've loaded all of these and they're all here. So I can just come in here and pick any of these colors and apply those to that photo in a Jiffy. And uh, that's part of the fun of editing in Luminar Neo. You have all these cool, uh, cool tools like the new color reference. Now, having said all that, the last thing I wanted to mention is my travel photography webinar. There's a link down below where you can register for it. And uh, I've been advertising that to the folks on my newsletter and it's filling up pretty quick. There's a few seats left if you'd like to join. There's no charge, um, it's donation based. So if you feel uh, inclined to make a donation during the webinar, you're able to do that, but it's free otherwise. And you are welcome to join me and participate and hang out. I'm gonna be walking through a lot of images, telling stories about the images, some tips, tricks, ideas, and insights on how to get better travel photos. That's coming on the 17th, so register now. And I'll see you there, my friends. And I'll see you here again soon as well because I'm making more videos, lots more to talk about. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I appreciate it. You guys have a great day. I'll see you soon, and until then, adios.